हेलो माय डियर क्यूरियस एंड स्टूडियस स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ सर्जरी माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर महेश चौधरी आई एम वार वेलकमिंग यू इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज दिस सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज कंटेंट्स एंटायर सर्जरी विथ एनेसेशिया विथ रेडियोलॉजी विथ ऑर्थोपेडिक सो स्टेट यून विथ अस लेट स्टार्ट आवर सर्जरी लेक्चर सीरीज हेलो डियर स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम अगेन इन माय सर्जरी लेक्चर नंबर 55 फाइव दैट इज द डिसीज ऑफ द यूरिनल ब्लैडर इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल लर्न द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द यूरिनल ब्लैडर कंजिनेटेड एनोमलीज ऑफ द ब्लैडर एक्स्ट्रॉफी दैट इज द एक्टोपिया एफेसी द ट्रीटमेंट इज ट्रीटमेंट परसिस्टेंट यूरेकस इंजीरियस टू द ब्लैडर इंट्राबेडल रप्चर एंड इज ट्रीटमेंट सो लेट स्टार्ट विथ मी द यूरिनरी ब्लैडर फर्स्ट वी विल सी द इम्ब्रियोलॉजी डेवलपमेंट द यूरिन ब्लैडर इज डेवलप फ्रॉम टू सोर्सेज द ट्राइगन इज डेवलप फ्रॉम द एंड ऑफ द मिजन एफ्रिक डक्ट्स मिजोडर्मल ओरिजिन एंड सेकंड इज द रेस्ट ऑफ द ब्लैडर इज डेवलप फ्रॉम द एंटोडर्मल क्लोइका द एंटोडर्मल क्लोइका इज डिवाइडेड इनटू टू पोर्शन द डॉर्सल पोजिशन फॉर्म द रेक्टम वेर एज द वेंटल पोजिशन बिकम्स सब डिवाइडेड इनटू थ्री पोर्शन फर्स्ट इज द सेफेलिक वसाइको यूरिथल पोर्शन इन टू विच द एटलेंटोइट एलेंटोइक कैनल ओपन एंड द मिजोनेफ्रिक डक्स ओपन सेकेंड इज द मिडल नैरो चैनल द पेल्युक पोर्शन एंड द काउडल फेलिक पोर्शन is closed externally by the urogenital membrane the second and the third parts contribute to the urogenital sinus the scaphelic vasaico urethral portions form the major part of the urinary bladder except the trigon the portion of the urogenital sinus which forms the bladder is prolonged above the umbilicus in the form of the narrow canal which is termed urethral now the congenital anomalies of the bladder are first is the extrapy that is the vasaiki ectopia vasaiki this is due to the complete ventral defect of the urogenital sinus and the overlying skeletal system the anterior wall of the bladder which develops from the ventral wall of the urogenital sinus and the infraumbilical part of the anterior abdominal wall fail to develop so not only the anterior or ventral aspect of the urogenital sinus fail to form but also the overlying muscles and bones fail to develop in this case there is a big spherical or oval defect in the anterior abdominal wall below the umbilicus which is occupied by the inner surface of the posterior wall of the bladder the mucosal edges fuse with the skin urine spurts onto the abdominal wall from the ureteric orifices dear students here is the animated picture of the bladder extrapy ectopia vesiki is clearly seen there is the exposed bladder exposed urethra umbilical cord stump is there this is the actual picture of the extrapy that is the ectopia vesiki is clearly seen this is the another image from there the ileocecal region is seen the intestine the ileum are outside of the abdomen now the incidence ectopic vesiki is a rare occurrence and its incidence is once in the 50000 births type there are two types are commonly encountered with complete and incomplete varieties the complete varieties is more common and is just described incomplete varieties the pubic bones are united and external genitalia are almost normal and there is a epispadias clinical features males are more oftenly affected than females the ratio is 4 as to 1 due to the pressure of the viscera behind it the posterior wall of the bladder protrudes through the defect this is a deep red in color and it bleeds really associate abnormalities the rami of pubic bones are widely separated the symphysis pubis is absent and its place there is a thick fibrous bands this makes the pelvic ring less rigid the femurs are rotated externally and the child waddles like a duck waddling gait that is called waddling the gait the umbilicus is absent genitalia in the males epispadias is the almost always present the penis is broader and shorter than normal it is drawn up and fixed to the abdominal wall the scrotum may be ill developed the testis may be normal or ectopic mal descended the prostate and the seminal vesicles are often rudimentary or, or absent in the females the clitoris is usually cleft the labia minora are separated there may be anomalies in the development of the uterus and vagina anal sphincter is the often lacks there is a chance hernia umbilical hernia may be present there may be inguinal hernia on one or both sides now the complications the exposed vesical mucous membrane is usually ulcerated with hemorrhage it may becomes painful recurrent ascending infection is common it may make the patient's life miserable and it is difficult to control such infection hydronephrosis may be caused by ureteral vesical obstruction continuous bad odor of urine accompanies the patient metaplastic changes may take place at the exposed mucous membrane of the urinary bladder and this may initiate formation of the adenocarcinoma half of the patient die of due to the renal failure 
Now the treatment. Obviously, the treatment is operation. First of all, divergence of urine has to be performed. Later on, after some months, the urinary bladder is excised and the closure is done. The operation is performed between four and six years of the age. In this case, diversion of urine is done into the sigmoid colon. Stricture at the site of the anastomosis, ureter sigmoidal. Recurrent pyelonephritis and hyperchloremic acidosis are the reasons of the ultimate death of patients. Diversion of the urine into an ileal conduit with excision of the bladder can be performed at the five years of age. As the problem of infection is less, renal function is better maintained, and it is better operation. It is better to do the operation. Recently, attempts are being made to reconstruct the bladder and sphincters within the first year of life. At first, osteotomy of both iliac bones are made just lateral to the sacroiliac joints. The bladder is closed. The urethra is reconstructed behind the pubis. The pubic bones are now brought in the midline and fixed together. The problem of incontinence is difficult to tackle. Now, the next entity, next point of this lecture is persistent urethras. Immunologically, the allantois which connects the urogenital sinus. With the umbilical ultimately become the urethras. Normally, the urethras is obliterated and the represented by a fibrous cord, which is called median umbilical ligament and extends from the apex of the bladder to the umbilicus. Now, the anomalies of the urethras like patent urethras, incomplete obliteration, and urethral cyst. First, patent urethras. Occasionally, the urethras may remain patent so that a fistula exists between the apex of the urinary bladder and the umbilicus. This is the urinary fistula of the umbilicus. In this case, urine drains constantly from the umbilicus. And the treatment, the treatment is the excision of the umbilicus way with excision of the urethras down to the apex of the bladder with closure of the urinary bladder. Dear students, here is the image of the patent urethras on your screen. You can see here is the incomplete obliteration. Sinus is there and the continued dribbling of the urine from the urine. Second is the incomplete obliteration. The umbilical end of the urethras fails to obliterate, giving rise to the urethral sinus. Of the umbilicus, the treatment is the excision of the urethral remnant. Third is the urethral cyst. If the ends of the urethras obliterate, leaving the middle portion of the urethras patent, a cyst may form by secretion of the patent portion of the duct. Such cyst may become quite large. It presents an immobile swelling in the midline, in the hypogastrium, deep to the umbilicus. Now the treatment. Treatment is the simple excision of the urethral cyst. Now the next point of this lecture is the injuries to the bladder. Major portion of the urinary bladder is extraperitoneal, whereas the minor portion, particularly the superior surface of the bladder, is intraperitoneal. So injuries to the bladder may be either extraperitoneal, which constitutes eighty percent of bladder injuries, or intraperitoneal, which constitutes only twenty percent of the all bladder injuries. Now the etiology: intraperitoneal injuries are usually caused by a blow or kick or fall onto the fully distended bladder. It often occurs. In drunk individuals, there are other causes of injuries to the bladder, which include stab wounds and gunshot wounds. In this group, iatrogenic causes are also included, which are passage by the cystoscope, endoscopic resection, and the diathermic coagulation of bladder tumors and extensive pelvic operations. Pathology: When the pelvis is fractured, fragments of the fracture may be perforate the bladder. This perforation usually results in the extraperitoneal rupture. This causes extravasation of the urine. Dear friends, this is the Anatomy of the urinary bladder. There is a trigon. You can see the both urinary orifices and uh, urethral opening. That is the trigon is clearly seen. The uh, ureter, the bladder, the prostatic urethra, external urethral orifices is clearly seen in this image. This is the iatrogenic rupture of the bladder. Suprapubic port is punctured. Both the layer and transversing through the bladder in the peritoneum is clearly seen. This is the extravasation of the urine is clearly seen extraperitoneally. In the abdomen, CT film is clearly seen. Now the clinical features. First is the extraperitoneal rupture. The diagnosis of the pelvic fracture is easily made by the lateral compression on the bony pelvis, which will evoke pain and crepitus at the fractured site. When this is associated with the lower abdominal and suprapubic tenderness, one may suspect extraperitoneal rupture of the bladder. The patient often tries to pass urine when blood and even clots in the urine will come out. Now the special indications: catheterization is usually required in patient with pelvic trauma, which reveals hematuria. But catheterization will difficult or impossible in case of the urethral injury with bloody discharge. A plain X-ray demonstrate pelvic fracture. Diagnosis is confirmed by pushing contrast medium into the bladder. 
about 120 ml of sterile isotonic saline is mixed with 60 ml of 35% hypex or chondre and this solution is introduced into the bladder and an on x-ray and x-ray is taken the patient is asked to pass urine and again x-ray is taken this will demonstrate the area of the extraperitoneal extravasation with intraperitoneal rupture this examination will show free contrast medium within the abdomen cystoscopy is now very helpful as bleeding and the clot obscure visualization and prevent accurate diagnosis here is the picture of the extraperitoneal injury of the bladder extravasation of the urine is clearly seen in the lateral view of the mri film this is also the picture of the extravasation of the urine and the extra, extraperitoneal rupture of the uh, bladder is clearly seen now the intraperitoneal rupture the peculiarity of this condition is that after the rupture the patient often neither has any complaint nor he feels the desire to pass urine because all urine is passes into the peritoneal cavity on examination the abdomen is distended after a few hours there may be the abdominal rigidity which indicates the peritonitis now the investigations has to be made in the injury of the bladder if the catheterization reveals empty bladder a plain x-ray in the erect position may show ground glass appearance of the lower abdomen due to the presence of the urine in the peritoneal cavity a peritoneal flap may reveal urine in the peritoneal cavity installation of radio opaque solution into the bladder as mentioned in the extraperitoneal rupture often confirm the diagnosis now here is a image showing the intraperitoneal bladder rupture 15 to 35% of the bladder rupture bladder usually distended at the time of trauma historically treated surgically conservative management is not possible here is a good picture of the intraperitoneal trauma of the bladder there is the urine collection in the pelvis now the treatment emergency conservative measures are shock and hemorrhage should be treated by proper resuscitation second is the surgical treatment when rupture of the bladder has been diagnosed operation should be performed without delay the hematoma and the urine are clean and the bladder is open in the midline for the extraperitoneal rupture after opening the bladder the inside is carefully inspected to the detect rupture or laceration is anywhere it is better to repair extraperitoneal rupture intravesically the rupture is closed from within with the dexon or a chromic catheter in two layers sometimes laceration may extend into the bladder neck which should be repaired meticulously after repair of the rupture and indwelling urethral catheter is introduced the midline bladder wound is closed around the suprapubic drainage another suprapubic corrugated rubber sheet drain is given into the retropubic space intraperitoneal for the intraperitoneal rupture the rupture is closed with dexon or a chromic catheter in two layers the peritoneal cavity is cleared of urine the lavage is should be given and the clear by from the urine and the blood dear students to clear your concept you can refer various books available in the market for these points here is the end of our surgery lecture number 55 that is the disease of the urinary bladder thank you